Nucleus, the best. Sonatina, trash. This is the undisputable ranking of the most popular or most talked about all-in-one orchestral sample libraries out there. We look at four parameters, price, sound, content, and expandability or ecosystem. And I will rank these all-in-one orchestras into one yeah. ultimate tier list. Which orchestra is the S-tier MVP and which one falls behind? Let's find out. out. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just kidding. It's obviously super subjective. These are my picks based on my experiences, what I read, what I tried myself. I own a lot of these libraries and I want to give you a good overview how I would estimate the beginner friendliness with the sound, the price, the whole package for orchestral composers who are beginning and looking for their first library purchase. All-in-one orchestras are great libraries as first purchases for beginners because they cover a huge range of instruments and articulations and really enable you to get going, write your first orchestral pieces. These are my subjective opinions opinions please don't hate me. You can make great music with the lower tier instruments as well. It's just for me, there's a balance between usability, price, content, sound, and yeah, that's how it is. For comparing prices between the libraries, we're going to look at the regular prices stated on the official developers' websites. Some all-in-one orchestras might get heavier discounts than other on occasions like Black Friday or seasonal sales, so keep that in mind. First in the list, we have Abbey Road One Orchestral Foundations by Spitfire Audio. Abbey Road One is a film scoring orchestra, which was recorded at the legendary Studio One at Abbey Road. This is the studio where some of the most iconic film soundtracks have been recorded, like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or Star Wars. Now, Abbey Road 1 comes for a regular price of 449 US dollars, which is comparable to some of the other all-in-one orchestra libraries out there by other developers. But it's important to keep in mind that this one is like a centerpiece for, of an ecosystem. So there are several libraries revolving around it, like expansions. So even if you buy Abbey Road 1 orchestral foundations, you're not really settled on everything you would want as a beginning composer. The library definitely shines through its pristine and iconic sound. And if you listen to it, you immediately feel like inside of a John Williams soundtrack. The sound is top-notch and the library's greatest strength. Now, the base version of the library lacks legatos and I think there are other developers that have this already included without you having to buy expansion packs. So, all in all, I would give Abbey Road 1 for beginner composers a low B tier, I would say. It's good, but it's not the best. It's probably a good addition if you already have a full, complete orchestra and want that pristine Hollywood sound in addition to that. Next up, we have Albion One, also by Spitfire Audio. Albion One has the same price as Abbey Road One Orchestral Foundations with 449 US dollars regular price. And I think it's tailored for beginning epic composers. Albion One has a more Hans Zimmer-like sound, whereas Abbey Road One is more like John Williams, I would say. Everything sounds a bit bigger, larger, and powerful. It's a 109-piece orchestra with high dynamics and energy that comes with legato and many other articulations and has four mic positions. Albion 1 is a good pick for beginners with one big caveat. You don't have full section control, so you can't control the violins independent from the cellos or the violin twos with the violas. They have these groups, like section groups, high strings, low strings, low woodwinds. So you're somewhat limited to these combinations of instruments and therefore don't have full flexibility. So because it includes legato, I think Albion 1 is better suited as an all-in-one orchestra for beginners than Abbey Road 1, but it's not enough for A tier in my opinion because it doesn't have full section control and beginners don't have everything they need at their disposal. Albion 1, B+. Next. Next. Amadeus by Sonic Score. 149 US dollars, not really talked about much, probably for a reason. It's a full orchestra, all the instruments are there, but no legato articulations, I think, and yeah, the sound is not great. There are freebies in this list that sound as good. So Amadeus, really worth it for beginning composers because there are better options that sound pretty much the same quality but they come even for free or for very few bucks. C minus. Next, BBC Symphony Orchestra Core by Spitfire Audio. Same price like Albion 1 and Abbey Road 1, so 449 US dollars. It's pretty much a full complete orchestra with all the instruments that you would like to have in a traditional western orchestra. Really good for beginners, has a fantastic, organic, natural, realistic sound. I think BBC is always really, in terms of tone, one of the best virtual instruments that's out there.
Tons of articulations, tons of content. And in terms of expandability, it's also great because you can upgrade to BBCSO Pro with uh, more mic positions, more instruments even. And uh, yeah, this one is a straight S tier. I think it's one of the best choices for an all-in-one orchestra for beginning composers, and it's awesome. Next, BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover, also Spitfire Audio. Now this one is basically the trimmed down version of the core version, it's free, completely free. It used to be 50 bucks or free if you fill out a survey and wait for several days, but now they just made it full, free, accessible to everyone, runs in the free Spitfire audio player, so you don't need anything, just download this and get started writing orchestral music. It's great that they made this. BBC SO Discover has the same great tone of the core version, 33 instruments with individual control over violins and violas, celli basses and horns, trumpets, no combination patches like the high strings and low strings of Albion 1, but of course limited in mic positions and articulations, no legatos. I think this one is a solid A. It's a no-brainer for people who start out and want to see if BBCSO, like this ecosystem, is something for them. If they think it is, it's perfect to upgrade, get BBCSO core and basically be done for a realistic orchestral sound. Next, BBCSO Pro. It comes at a regular price of 999 US dollars, not very beginner friendly. It's the same fantastic tone of BBCSO core and Discover. It has many instruments, a complete bonkers amount of mic positions, giving you full control of a close, far sounds, like surround ambient microphones, two different mixes, and it's crazy. Is it worth picking up BBCSO Professional directly for beginners? Probably not, I don't think so. It's a B- minus from the standpoint of a beginning composer, but it's a fantastic power horse uh, if you are like a professional composer or looking for that extra bass clarinet that's maybe not included in BBCSO core and um, other instruments. So this one, I wouldn't say it's the perfect uh, pick for a beginner, but it's definitely a great library. Next, Berlin Orchestra inspired by orchestral tools. A full symphony orchestra on your laptop. That's how they market it. So. Yeah, it's a full symphony orchestra and it has a wonderful sound recorded at Teldex scoring stage in Berlin. Beautiful, awesome, but it doesn't really have full content like uh, the name full symphony orchestra would imply. Like, yeah, there's a full symphonic sound, but you don't have individual section control. You are relying on different combinations of instruments, like for example, violin ones plus violin twos. You can't split them in two patches. You have to play them as an ensemble together. Same for things like trumpet plus horn ensemble. You can't access the horns individually. There are some solo instruments, which is a great bonus. There are not too many articulations per section and um, there's only one mic position. So definitely limited here. A bonus of Orchestral Tools libraries is that you can buy them a la carte. So if you really like the sound of one of these instruments, you can buy them individually. Expandability is great because you pretty much have access to the entire Berlin series, like Berlin Strings, Berlin Woodwinds, uh, also record at the same scoring stage. So, so if you really want to get started composing with an orchestra and you are maybe on the move with a laptop at first, then you can get Berlin Inspire and then upgrade to the Berlin Strings and other Berlin libraries at a later point, even though those will be quite expensive so orchestral tools definitely not one of the cheapest ones. Berlin Inspire is 399 euros, which is okay, I guess. But then there's also Berlin Inspire 2 if you want the more emotive underscoring package that completes Berlin uh, Inspire 1. And then we would look at 800 bucks, which is obviously more expensive. I think there are better beginner orchestras with more articulations and more features. But I th still think Berlin Inspire is one of the better options out there and I would give it a B minus. Now if you want to solve that instrumentation problem that I mentioned in Berlin Inspire, where you only have like combinations of instruments, that will be Berlin Orchestra created with Berkeley. This one features the entire range of the orchestra, all the instruments, solo instruments, everything that you want at your fingertips, same sound, Teldex scoring stage, super good, super lush, roomy, realistic, great. Um, but 849 euros plus VAT, uh, you probably pay 200 euros for the Teldex scoring stage and 100 euros because it's orchestral tools. I think it's a bit expensive. Yeah, maybe if you study at Berkeley and you can afford it, then it's a good option. But for the usual orchestral beginner, I'm not sure if, it, if I would start with an 849 euro orchestra. So for me, this probably goes into the C tier, definitely above Amadeus because 
uh, the sound is infinitely better. Um, but for the price, I think I wouldn't recommend this as a great first library for, for orchestra beginners. Maybe if money is not a problem for you, then I think it's a great one. But then you might argue that you could also go for a BBC Symphony Orchestra Professional. Also, Berlin Orchestra only comes with one mic mix, so that's not a lot of control over the sound. Um, and I think I would expect more for an 849 euro instrument. Next, Jaeger by Audio Imperia. Now, Jaeger is not really a full all-in-one orchestra because there is no woodwinds, okay? It's an epic orchestra. It's aimed at trailer music, epic composers, hybrid, orchestral, the big sounds, you know, like the Brahms and booms. That's Jaeger for you. No woodwinds needed, you wouldn't hear them anyway. Huge brass, great sounds, big percussion, a bit of sound design. It comes with the great and famous vocals of Merete Soltvet, who also sung for uh, Two Steps From Hell. So Jaeger, only if you like the hyped sound, don't go for it if you're interested in classical composing. There are much better orchestras for that. You have good expandability for the epic sound because you could buy um, array of strings and a telos brass uh, if you really want to upgrade uh, the sound for like the epic range and have more articulations there. Um, that works, but for beginners, um, I wouldn't recommend Jaeger. I would give it a solid C tier. You can get it if you already have a basic orchestra and then want to ramp up the intensity if you want to go for that hybrid orchestra sound. But I think Nucleus will be the better deal. Next, Contact Factory Library 2. What? Yes, Contact Factory Library 2. This one is a bit of a surprise entry, right? Because, um, yeah, Contact 7 just came out and you know the full version of Contact, it always comes with this factory library, infinite amount of instruments, tons of stuff, not the best sampling quality, not the best programming, but with the Contact Factory Library 2, they actually decided to improve the orchestral section a lot. They sat together with orchestral tools and yeah, they said we don't want it to sound sh anymore. So now it actually sounds decent. In my opinion, Contact is still an absolute basic investment for beginning composers. I think it's great, it opens up pathways for so many niche developers for affordable, fantastic instruments. If you buy Contact 7, you get this one for free included with it. And that alone, combined with the fact that it now also sounds decent, uh, makes this an, an A-tier pick for me. If you're a composer and you've maybe done other genres in the past, maybe you dabble into some electronic stuff or jazz, you think, you know, maybe this orchestral thing is something I want to try out. But I don't want to invest into this 849 euro Berlin Orchestra or even the 449 euro BBC CSO core. There's a good chance you already have contact and if you have this contact factory library too, this is perfect to get your fingers into the orchestral music. Try out these instruments there. It will be basically free if you have contact and then it's an absolute no-brainer. It's not S tier because you still have to buy contact which is not cheap and it doesn't have that pristine sound uh, that other orchestral libraries have. So solid A tier. Next, Metropolis Arc 1 by Orchestral Tools. Now Metropolis Arc is a series of five installments, five personalities of one huge orchestra. I made a video on it showing all the five parts of this series, what makes them up and how it sounds like. Check the video up here. I chose Metropolis Arc 1 because it comes close to a full orchestra. Two, three, four, and five are more like utility tools. So Metropolis Arc 3, for example, has only like percussive and short articulations. So it doesn't really make sense to include it in this list. Five is more for like supportive, evolving effects and um, textures. So Metropolis Arc 1 is a bombastic, loud, and uh, large orchestra. It's great for epic music that still has a organic sound. It's recorded at Teldex scoring stage like the other orchestral tools libraries. I have it and I think it's great, but it comes at 549 euros plus VAT. It doesn't have individual section control down to the degree of like violin one, violin two, violas, cello, basses. It doesn't have that. It has high strings and low strings, high woodwinds, low woodwinds, you know, this kind of stuff. It has a bit more granularity than for example, Albion one. Like you have bassoons and contrabassoons and trumpets, but you don't have violins and violas. You only have high strings. I don't know 
why they decided to do it like that. In my opinion, this is a minus because you cannot write a orchestral score in, a, in the traditional way if you wanted to. So if you don't care about that, it's gonna be fine. Like if you only want to create epic in your face orchestral music, that's perfectly good. Like for example, Alex Mukala used Metropolis Arc every time he composes and you can create full soundtracks with it. But you don't get the full control that you might expect for 549 euros plus VAT. That being said, Metropolis Arc series super good, especially if you combine them. If you get Metropolis Arc 2, you get the softer dynamics um, that complement Metropolis Arc 1, which basically can only go fortissimo in your face, large and huge. But for beginners, I don't think it's a great library to start out unless you say, Epic is all I want to do, and I don't need full control over the instruments, then it's great. For those reasons, for beginners, Metropolis Arc is a C tier. Next, Miroslav Philharmonic 2. People keep talking about it. People ask me, hey, do you think Miroslav is a good orchestral library if I just start out with orchestral music? It's not. It costs 500 bucks, it's old, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> There are competitors that sound better. The UI isn't great. Nothing feels modern about it. It feels old. It looks old. I don't know why anyone would buy it in 2022 with such great other options available. You probably can create some decent orchestral soundtracks with it if you're good at composing. But if you're good at composing, your songs will sound massively better with other orchestral libraries. So, so for 500 euros, Miroslav Philharmonic 2, D tier. Don't bother. Next, Musio. What is Musio? Musio is CineSample's new subscription service. So Musio basically is a, is a bundle, it's a software that you can download and then you can load individual patches from the cloud without owning the instruments. It has a large part of their catalog like Cine Strings, Cine Brass, Cine Woodwinds. That's why I included it here. With Musio, you basically have a full orchestra at your hands and it costs you 20 bucks a month or 149.99 a year. It's very accessible because you don't have huge downloads. You can only, you know, choose the instruments that you want and load them. Uh, the design is nicely streamlined, but at the same time, you don't own the flagship libraries like CineStrings. You only get like a bit simplified versions of them. You don't have all the full controls available, but you get the great sound of Cine samples for 19.99 a month. So that's pretty good. Personally, I would still prefer to at least own some orchestral instruments so I don't lose access to my project files if I don't have the subscription available anymore. Museo definitely has potential and I think it's pretty cool because for a low amount of money you can get a large amount of instruments at your disposal and that's why I would give it a B tier. I would probably still prefer having the orchestra on my hard drive rather than from a cloud so I would give it a low ish B tier because it's a promising ecosystem that's affordable and accessible for everyone and you get some really good orchestral sounds out of it. Next, Nucleus by Audio Imperia. Nucleus, in my opinion, is one of the best libraries for beginning orchestral composers who are looking for a complete package of an all-in-one orchestra. Definitely S tier. Why? Because Nucleus has basically everything you need. It has full section control, you have your clarinets and your bassoons, you can control them separate from the flutes and the piccolo, you have the entire string sections with all instruments individual, the brass, there's percussion, there's a little bit of sound design, they recently updated it to include a harp, there are solo instruments, and there's even a choir. So if you buy Nucleus as a beginner, you have a full, complete, flexible orchestra. Nucleus has true legato for most instruments and the most basic articulations that you'll need. And a special thing about Nucleus is its sound. Now this is something we have to talk about because this might influence your purchase decision. Nucleus has a crisp and smooth cinematic sound. It has a quite direct sound. Some would also call it maybe processed or epic. Now in fact Nucleus comes with two microphone mixes. One is called classic and one is called modern. The modern mix is the default one, so it's a little bit hyped up perfect for hybrid orchestral music, epic trailer music. But then if you say, okay, I like this modern sound, but I also want to go a little bit, you know, more classical, a little bit less pumped, then you can change the mix with the click of one button. And then suddenly it's, it has a classic mix, which is like the original samples without processing. Now this offers Nucleus much needed flexibility. So you are not 
stuck in that hybrid orchestral sound like you would probably be with Jaeger, but you still have this more natural sound. Now, if you're a beginning orchestral composer and you want to write primarily classical music, I would still recommend BBCSO Core over Nucleus, simply because Nucleus, even in the classic mix, it still sounds a bit more direct than the very lush and roomy um, BBCSO chord, which is probably a sound that's closer to like a real symphony, um, whereas Nucleus is more fit for this, you know, like media productions in, in television, um, film music, video game scoring, I would say. Both Nucleus and BBC Symphony Orchestra Core are Definitely S-tier recommendations for great all-in-one orchestral libraries for beginners. Nucleus, if you want that more direct sound that also opens the pathway to like hybrid orchestral music. And BBCSO, if you're looking to write realistic, convincing orchestras that sound like you're actually sitting in the same room as the orchestra. Nucleus also has great expandability. There's a Nucleus Lite for under 100 bucks, which uh, has the ensemble patches. That's a good way to you know, dip your toes into it and see if this orchestra sound is for you and then you can upgrade uh, to the full version. Also, there are the full section libraries like Araya, Talos, Cerberus for percussion also um, that you can expand if you like that Audio Imperia sound. Next, Hollywood Orchestra Opus Editions by East West. This one is interesting. East West has this super popular Hollywood Orchestra that's already quite a few years old but is frequently used by composers and now they redid it by combining old samples and recording new material, uh, feeding it into a brand new engine, which is the Opus engine, and uh, create this full orchestra based out of it. It's huge, almost one terabyte download. It has everything you need and more. Crazy amount of instruments, crazy amount of articulations, mic positions, yeah. It's a bit overwhelming in my opinion, both on the sheer content, download size, and also the, the requirements on your system. It's a solid full orchestra with tons of content at a high price of 995 US dollars if you were to buy it at regular price, even though there are frequent discounts. But what makes this interesting for beginners, I would say, is the subscription. Because Opus is included in the Composer Cloud Plus plan. So that one comes at 1999 a month or 199 a year, and it includes the entire Hollywood Orchestra Opus edition. So you can try it out for 20 bucks a month and see if this is for you. Opus is not S tier for me because of the high regular price, overwhelming download size, uh, it's quite taxing on the system, but I think it's a deep sampled orchestra that um, with the $19.99 price tag per month makes it a weak A tier. But unfortunately it has to be activated with iLog, either with a physical dongle or like a cloud, which in my opinion is a hassle that we shouldn't be bothering with in 2022. So that I have to give it like one minus point, which makes it a B plus tier. It's a solid all-in-one orchestra. Next, we have The Orchestra Complete by Sonoscore. It costs 459 US dollars and also comes with their dedicated libraries, Strings of Winter and Horns of Hell. So definitely a lot of content there. The Orchestra Complete 2 comes with an interesting engine that also has a different orchestrator presets that give you like um, moods, like for example, fantasy vibes or epic, rhythmic, intense atmospheres. So this one is a bit of a different approach to the orchestra. It comes also with a pipe organ, which adds some nice flavor to it. It has evil brass um, for like a huge menacing sound. And in comparison to, for example, Opus, it's much more light on resources. So this one actually will run on the laptop and you'll be fine with it. I think it's a great sketching tool where the sample quality is maybe not in the prime tier of all orchestras that have been sampled in the past, but it's lightweight, it will run on every machine, and it provides some really cool, you know, extra functionality. So if that's something for you, you might look into it. For me, it's a solid C tier. Um, I don't have strong opinions about it. I think it's decent. If you like the sound, go for it. Um, I would put it in between Berlin Orchestra because it has the Teldex sound, which in my opinion is superior, um, and ahead of Metropolis Arc because of the 
more flexibility for the instrument sections. Next, we have Vienna Symphonic Library's Synchrom Prime Edition. Gosh, they have really weird names and product palettes. VSL's entry-level orchestra, um, pretty great, to be honest. It has the... It has that uh, defined sound of uh, Synchron, which is less, it gives less the impression that you're in a big hall, like for example with BBCSO by Spitfire, but it has like a, a tight sound, I would say. Quite expensive. It costs 595 euros regular price, whereas Nucleus and BBCS Core would only be 449 US dollars. It has all the instruments you want, full control over individual instruments, different articulations, legados, so definitely a full good orchestra that um, for sure A tier level for me. Now, Unfortunately, it's also activated by iLock, either with a physical dongle or the cloud. So it's a bit of a pain if you change machines, if you're on the laptop on the go, because I think people buy these all-in-one orchestras that are more lightweight because they want to also have like a rig where they don't have the most crazy CPU power and they want to switch and, and maybe write on the go with a laptop. And when they come back to the main studio, maybe they want to continue the project. This is with iLock. Yeah, you know, there are some activation limitations. It's not a big issue, but I think um, it would be cool if uh, there would be other ways to activate it. It's A tier for me, great uh, all-in-one orchestra. Personally, I would still prefer Nucleus for the modern type of sound and BBCSO for the realistic one, uh, also because they're cheaper. They have uh, similar content available, I would say. But I heard really good things about the software of Synchron Prime. Um, it has integrated articulation switching for Studio One, for example. Um, really good uh, ecosystem. It obviously gives um, you the opportunity to expand with the other Synchron libraries of VSL. So you can really expand your orchestra and uh, in terms of articulations and mic positions. So Synchron Prime Edition, great one. Uh, if you like the sound, go for it, A tier. It's good. Last but not least, no, last but least, Sonatina Symphonic Orchestra. It's old, it's free, and it sucks. At least from today's standpoint, you know? How can you bash a free product? Well, you shouldn't, but Sonatina, you know, it's really old. You can still download it by third-party apps. It doesn't have like a official company attached to it anymore, I think, or at least I couldn't find the information, because there is BBCSO Discover, which gives you a full orchestra uh, for free. There is no point in expanding it. There are no flagship libraries if you want the string, if you really like the string sound and you want to get like the full dedicated strings with more articulations and mic positions, like there is nothing like that. If you download Sonatina, yeah, you can play around with it, see if you like the sounds. I don't think you will if you try out any of the other instruments and there is no point in really getting good at it because as soon as you improve your composer skills, you will immediately go into these instruments that give you more flexibility, have a better sound. It would be wasted time to learn this pro program and get good at it because you will not stick with it for your career. I will guarantee you. So D tier for me, don't bother. And that's it. This is our tier list. Clear winners, Nucleus and BBCSO. So does the freebie, BBCSO Discover, because it's free and still good. The Contact Factory Library and Synchron Prime Edition. I think these are really great all-in-one orchestras that give you a fantastic experience relative to the content, price, the sound, and the expandability of other libraries from the same developer, maybe even record in the same hall, that give you more control, more articulations, more microphones for the future. Great instruments. At the bottom, Mirosaf, overpriced, lower in quality, don't bother. Freebie Sonatina, no expandability, shitty sound, don't bother. Now go right down in the comments and tell me what your favorite all-in-one orchestra is. What helped you as a beginner? What would you recommend a beginner who starts orchestra composing in 2022 or maybe 2023? And share your opinion with us. Subscribe to the channel if this was helpful for you to get an overview over what's on the market right now. And I'll see you soon.